Hey guys, Pagai Rules here, and it finally happened. Something made me furious enough to come out of my semi-retirement. So here's a fully edited video just by myself, like I used to do. As I'm sure almost all of you know, Steven Hillenburg, the creator of SpongeBob, passed away on November 26th, 2018. Tragically, he fell to ALS at the young age of 57. I really don't have much to say specifically about that because although Hillenburg created something that did go on to have a huge influence over my life, he himself was always a very private man. And I feel like it's weird and disrespectful for me to speak about the guy as if I actually knew him. All I can say is that it's tremendously sad that the man passed and it's absolutely heart-wrenching that he died at such a relatively young age. Three months later, in February of 2019, we heard from Brian Robbins, the new president of Nickelodeon, that they were going to do, quote, multiple SpongeBob spin-off projects. At the time, of course, it seemed incredibly dodgy that this happened so soon after Hillenburg passed. Steve famously had several rules for SpongeBob, such as not allowing Pearl's mother to ever be revealed, not allowing SpongeBob to get his voting license, and not wanting the show to have any spin-offs or crossovers. So this news seemed highly suspect at the time. However, I did not know Hillenburg personally, so I could not verify if Hillenburg would have approved of this or not. His past actions make it seem like he would not have approved of this at all, including the famous gumball story, where he talks about finding a SpongeBob gumball machine and it's sending him into some sort of existential crisis about how his show has just grown too big beyond himself. So it definitely seemed like this was something he wouldn't like, but without knowing exactly how he was feeling towards the very end of his life, I cannot say whether or not he would have approved of this or not. I'm not interested in putting my words into a deceased man's mouth whom I did not know at all. So while it was frustrating, it was one of those things where because so many details were surrounded in the shadows of the entertainment industry, it wasn't something worth getting too, too upset over, especially because we did not know the full extent of what these spinoff projects could mean. It could be something as simple as a series of minute long shorts about Patrick or something as extensive as as a spin-off for every single character on SpongeBob. The day I'm recording this, June 4th, 2019, we got the news that one of these SpongeBob spin-off projects is an actual spin-off series that is not only all in CG, but is also a prequel to the show that puts SpongeBob and other supporting characters at a much younger age. Okay, so first of all, there is the ridiculousness that Nickelodeon wants to have two cartoons about the same exact character, but set years apart. No doubt they got this strategy from young Sheldon. Next, the fact that it's in CG is done to A, tie it into that movie that's coming out, which also has some sort of camp element, and B was done because at this point, depending on how they do it, CG can be a lot cheaper than traditional animation, especially because SpongeBob ain't made in Flash. I can guarantee you it costs more to make that show than it does something like The Loud House or The Adventures of Kid Danger. But really, the biggest thing that frustrates me about this whole announcement is, of course, about Steven Hillenburg and his vision for the show. See, the thing about SpongeBob that has always made it like a bad candidate for spinoffs in the first place is the fact that the world of SpongeBob is not actually all that fleshed out. Yes, the show can certainly have some good atmosphere, and yes, the show's setting works for what it is, but there isn't an extensive cast of characters. There's like only 20 characters that make multiple appearances if you don't count the background fish. And if you do count the background fish, their personality varies from episode to episode. We aren't talking about a show like The Simpsons, which has dozens and dozens of characters whom you could theoretically base a show around. Not that I'm saying that's a good idea either, because it isn't. But at least the foundation is there to create something new off of it. But because there aren't tons and tons of characters and locations in SpongeBob, they are going to have to take a lot of creative liberties. Liberties that might very well fly in the face of what Hillenburg's vision was. You could argue that everything that's happened on SpongeBob thus far has been an extension of Hillenburg's vision. Even though there are certainly things that seem to contradict it or come from a different style or clearly have a specific artist's mark on them, they still at least come from the starting point of Hillenburg's vision. But now they're going to design a show from the ground up, maybe reusing characters, although they're going to be at different ages, so that still requires some redesigning and some retweaking. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a spinoff. It would be the same dang show. And of course, Hillenburg gets no say in the matter because he's no longer with us. 
Which leads us to the big disgusting thing that I'm really upset about. See, I'm not upset that they're making a spin-off of a show that I once really cared about. I'm not some SpongeBob super fan that's diehard upset that they're going to change something or do something a little differently. No, I'm upset because everything is lining up to make it look exactly the higher-ups at Nickelodeon, including Brian Robbins, either waited until Steven Hillenburg passed to go through with these plans, or saw him passing as an opportunity to come up with this SpongeBob spin-off plan. It is no coincidence that only three months after the man passes, they announce these projects. How low and disgusting and filthy of people can you be as executives to wait before the guy who had creative integrity and a vision and rules and limits for what he wanted his property to be and not be, wait for him to die before you go ahead and make your plans to take his creation, the thing he worked hard for, and wring it out to get every last penny from. It's not just because this only happened three months after he passed away. It's not just because they did not mention Hillenburg approving of this when talking about the Spongebob spinoffs. No. What pushed me to make this video, and what confirms for me that Nickelodeon is disrespecting Hillenburg's legacy, is Paul Tibbet. The guy who was there from the very start of Spongebob, who worked very closely with Steven Hillenburg, who took the reins from Hillenburg after he left after the first movie and continued to work on the show through season 9 when Hillenburg came back, that Paul Tibbet tweeted out this message. I do not mean any disrespect to my colleagues who are working on this show. They are good people and talented artists, but this is some greedy, lazy executiving right here. And they all know full well Steve would have hated this. Shame on them. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for confirming this. Thank you so very much for confirming what seemed to be a disgusting situation. Because now we know, now we all know, that Nickelodeon is the type of company that waits for people to die before they can go even further further in cashing in on a property that someone has made 20 years ago. And I personally put the blame on Brian Robbins and his team of cronies. Saima might be gone, but nothing has changed. I don't know about anyone else out there, but I would never in a million years want to work for this company. Yes, Nickelodeon's done sleazy stuff in the past. Of course, they're a company. Most companies do. But this, this is just... I 100% refuse to support a show that is directly stomping on the legacy of a man who created something that means so much to so many people. Steven Hillenburg was a modest guy. He had a love of aquatics, and he had a funny sense of humor. He went on to create a cartoon, and that cartoon went on to blow up in a way he could have never imagined. He wasn't some egomaniacal weirdo. From all accounts, he was a modest guy, a good person. This could happen to anyone. I have friends who are artists. I know people who create things and, and love what they create. Imagine you create something and then some awful, disgusting corporate overlords take it and then use it for 20 plus years in ways that you never intended, never wanted to see, and ways that you don't even have any control over because, oh yeah, at the end of it, they waited until you died because they were making a decision that they knew you would stand against. Like Paul Tibbet, I, I don't hold anything against the actual creative people who are working on Camp Coral. And I will say what I've always said about Spongebob. Since Nickelodeon is making hand over fist cash from this property, they had better put as much money as humanly possible into making this show actually amazing. The animation quality better look like Pixar. The writing staff better be amazing alums who have created great works in the past. And they should put as much love and time and care into it because the thing they are making is based on a show by Steven Hillenburg, the man 
who, along with his talented team of writers, made a property that single-handedly paid for the salaries of so many Nickelodeon executives. Maybe Camp Coral will be a good show. Maybe it will be a bad show. Right now, though, it does not matter. But making such a huge decision about milking SpongeBob further right after Hillenburg is passed is such a disgusting, filthy corporate move that I don't think I will ever get over it. Five Guy Rules, out.